I'm reading a horror story in Braille. Uh, something bad's going to happen. I can just feel it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys were lost in the woods. They rounded a bend, saw a tree covered with bacon. It's a bacon tree. We're saved. They ran toward the tree, but were gunned down. It wasn't a bacon tree. It was a ham bush. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that one was just... That's a good one. I came home today and there was a manila envelope lying on the doormat with big print that says, do not bend. How do I pick it up? I'm not even going to respond to that, that one. one was, that was a thinker. It was a thinker. Are we going to do this? Or? <laughs> Dasher and Dancer <laughs> this is keep it taking now. extra coffee breaks. <laughs> Dasher and Dancer keep taking extra coffee breaks. They must think that they are Santa's Starbucks. What rock group has four men that don't sing? To figure these out so bad just by sheer mind power mount rushmore yeah i'm out yep well thanks so much for tuning <laughs> in to one more thing this uh, has been <laughs> sorry i just you, no you that was it. good how, yeah. how many people are you sending those to those go to my grandkids i do one every day yeah. you know what randy's i will group is like mm -hmm. okay. it's just a zoom of an hour long session of him going <laughs> off and reading Sitting out a fire, read it. I'm. That I mean, that's Christmas right there. Yeah. Last, right, here we go. Last Walmart. night, last night I ate a kids' meal at McDonald's. Boy, his mom was furious with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to our high friends. Is that good? Yeah. You got something? I got it. I, I think I've we got. got all the things. <laughs> oh, you've been taking this for real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh he's got. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome to another installment of One More Thing. This is our weekly show where we come to you with one more thing about yesterday's sermon. These are just things that uh, we think are interesting or things that we found in our study that um, we would love for you to know and us to know, but it just didn't work with the flow of the sermon or maybe there was just not enough time with it. So Randy is back with us with one more thing about his sermon. Randy, go over uh, just what happened yesterday. What'd you talk about? What was your message all about? Uh, well, we, we talked about Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, three encounters that Jesus had with men who wanted to follow Jesus. The first guy came and he said, I'll go with you wherever you want to go. And Jesus said, if you want to go with me, it's not a safe place. You're going to be in harm's way. The second guy, this is really interesting. Jesus said to him, follow me. The guy says, first, let me go bury my father. And Jesus just goes off on him. He says, uh, let the dead bury the dead. You go proclaim the kingdom of God. Third guy says, I I'll go with you, but first let me say goodbye to my parents. And Jesus just says, no, doesn't work that way. Don't look back. You've got to keep your eyes forward, fixed on the mark. Keep going where we're going, not thinking about what's behind you. It's the second one that's interesting to me because uh, uh this is the one that Jesus said to him, follow me. Every other time in the Bible where we explicitly have Jesus saying, follow me, it is to one of those that he's invited to be one of the 12. It's what he said to Peter. Peter was casting his nets and, and, and Jesus came and said, uh, if you follow me, I'll teach you how to fish for men. And James and John were mending their nets when Jesus said, follow me. And, and Matthew was at work at his tax booth. And Jesus said, follow me. And in each time, they dropped what they were doing immediately. And they went with him. And they became a part of his inner circle. And so I wonder if this guy was being offered something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, what really makes it interesting for me is because of what Jesus said he wanted him to do. He said, you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. That word proclaim really is to preach. And he is saying, you've got the ability, you've got the gift, you've got a call on your life to preach. And the guy said, yeah, I probably do. I'm interested in that, but first. And Jesus says, no, it's there is no but first. It doesn't matter what else comes after that. He said, this is what you're called to do. We want you to go preach. And I wonder how many people 
that have thought through the tug on their life right now that God has maybe said, you have the gift to preach. Or God says, I want to use you in some special way for my kingdom. I would like to pull you into service in a full-time way in my in my kingdom. And we say, but I'd like to, but first. Mm-hmm. And he says, no, no, let's do it now. Mm. Yeah, it's just, I mean, that's a powerful point. It's just amazing that he got the call to follow me, just like the other disciples yeah. did. The other disciples dropped everything and just yeah. went. And he was, I have this other thing. I have this... Uh, the main thing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, I love your question of how many more of us have that same call yeah. to do something for Jesus. And the answer, or the question is just right there in front of us. It's right there. Yeah, just waiting to be answered. That's right. All righty. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in, and we'll see you next week.